Now, did you know more than half of the bones in your body are found in your hands and feet? There are 27 in each hand and 26 in each foot. Wow! Sometimes things don't always heal exactly as planned, as our next patient found out. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ultramobile for his first patient. And I'll also be out in the park answering your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Anna with a funny finger. That's amazing! Seems perfectly obvious why you've come to the Ultramobile. That's nothing. Look at my little finger. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Looks to me like a case of my little finger's even more amazing than the trick I can do with my other finger's itis. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about your little finger, Anna. It started when I was five years old. My mum told me to open the door and it, the door just, like, hit it and it cracked. Painful. Mm-hmm. So what happened then? The doctor put this um, straight thing on me to make it, like, stay straight, but it didn't work. So, Anna, I want to have a closer look at your finger. Can you open the eyelid on the ouch cam? Now, get it as straight as you can. Uh, uh, uh. That's all you can do, is it? Yeah. So the doctor used something called a splint, and the splint is meant to hold a broken bone straight until it mends. And in your case, the splint didn't work. It's nothing to worry about. Does the finger work well for you, or would you prefer to have it straightened out? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I have to do an operation when I go old, older. In the future, if you started to get ache in the joints or you did a job where you needed to do something very precise with your left hand, at that point, you might think about doing an operation. And it certainly is possible to straighten out that finger. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Time to get out of the Ouchmobile and into the park. I want to see if anyone's got any questions for me. Let's go out and about. Why does uh, your belly rumble when you're hungry? In fact, it can rumble at any time. But when you're eating, you swallow bits of air. And when you're digesting food, it actually makes gas. And the rumbling is the bubbles bubbling up through the stuff you've eaten. And the name is Borobarygmi. So the next time you're getting rumbling, you can go, oh, I've just got a bit of Borobarygmi going on. <laughs> Back at the Ultramobile, the next case is in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient, please? It's 12-year-old Carnell with an extraordinary eye. So, Carnell, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? Uh, when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off itis. I know what you mean. Now, tell me more about that. It's called Marcus Gunn syndrome. Now, that is a very, very rare syndrome indeed. So, in all the things ever published about medicine, there are only 300 people reported to have had it. Can you open the eye? on the ouch cam. Now, can you give us a demonstration of what happens? I can't see it. Now, can you try wiggling your jaw from side to side like that? It's not easy to see, but Carnell's eyelid is twitching from side to side. That's because the bit of his brain that's making his jaw move is also telling his eyelid to move. And does it affect your life at all? No, not really, because not much people notice it. As a doctor, it is very interesting to see someone with a syndrome this rare. Carnell, thank you very much for coming and showing us your amazing eye in the Ouchmobile. OK, thank you, Dr Zan. Mm. Oh, hello, Matthew. Have you got a question for me? Um, why do muscles get tired when you're exercising? When you're exercising, your muscles use oxygen and a fuel source, which is usually sugar. So your muscles can get tired if they run out of oxygen or they run out of sugar. But if you're lifting a very heavy weight, you get other things building up in the muscles, like lactic acid, and they can hurt. So it depends on what kind of exercise you're doing. What sort of exercise do you normally do? Press-ups. All oh, right. How many can you do? Five. How many can you do? 200. Show me. I want to see this. <laughs> Great question, Matthew. <laughs> But you need to train your muscles a bit more, Zan. Dr Chris is stepping out too. He's on a quest for questions. Dr Chris. What is your medical mystery question? My question is, on roller coasters, it feels like I don't have a stomach. So what you're describing is when the roller coaster gets to the top and you go over, that's when your stomach rises. What you're experiencing there 
is no gravity. So you're floating, and it's a bit like being in space. It can make you feel quite sick. What do you have to remember when you're sick on a roller coaster? You've got to be sick into the air so that it goes over all the people behind you. Yuck! Chris! Can I give you a sticker? Come on, Sand. Don't tell me you've never done it. That's your next call. It's from Bethany, who has an infection. Hi, Bethany. How are you? Hi, Sand. So have you got a question for me? I do. How are the painkillers know where the pain is? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I want to know how the painkillers know where the pain is, itis. Ouch, that sounds painful. The thing about painkillers is they actually don't know where to go. What they do is they work all over your body. Now, are you taking painkillers at the moment? Paracetamol and ibuprofen. These painkillers act both in the brain, where they stop pain signals being received, and elsewhere in the body. So wherever you have inflammation, you tend to get hot and red and swollen, and the anti-inflammatory painkillers that you're taking are damping down that inflammation so it hurts a bit less while your body mends. Does that make sense? It does. Here you go. Thank you. Bethany, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Now, did you know you have the most hairs on your head when you're about 16? This gets less as you get older, but don't worry, you've got plenty, with around 100,000 of them on your bonds. <laughs> Can I have the next patient, please? First in is eight-year-old Liam, whose scalp needs some studying. So, Liam, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? I have a double crown. I want to know a little bit about it. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got a double crown and I want to know a little bit about it. Itis. That's right. Now, tell me about these double crowns. Where are they? Here on my head. On the top of your head. Well, I want to get a closer look. Can you lift the eyelid for the Ouch cam? That's great. So everyone has one crown at least. That's the bit at the back of your head where the hair kind of whirls in a circle. But in Liam's case, he's got two. And that is very unusual. What is a crown? A crown is nature's way of covering your head with hair very effectively. Your hair's also got to change direction. So the hair's got to go down at the back, down at the front, down at the sides. And the only efficient way of doing that is to swirl it round in a circle. All having a double crown means is that you're a bit special and a bit unusual. Very few people have them. I've never seen one before. So thanks very much for bringing your amazing head into the Ouchmobile. And thank you, Dr. Zan. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouching about in the park. How can we be twins but be so different? So how are you guys different? She's got Down syndrome and I don't. And you don't? OK. Zand and I come from one egg, whereas you each come from a different egg in your mum. And Down syndrome happens when the egg that made Charlotte had one extra chromosome in it. So in every egg, the chromosomes, the chromosomes are the genes, and Charlotte's got one more chromosome than you. That means you look a little bit different, and I guess you feel a bit different, and you may act a little bit different, you may think a little bit differently. So what things do you like to do that you're good at? Dancing. 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 So like all twins, you've probably got lots of things that you like that are the same. Yeah. And so the one difference is you've got an extra chromosome. Yeah. Back at the Elchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's ten-year-old Josiah who wants Zahn to check out his cheek. So, Josiah, why have you come to the Elchmobile? Well, I have a scar running from my eye to my mouth. So what's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a scar running from my eye to my mouth itis. Sounds right to me. Now, how did it happen? Well, I grabbed something from my brother and he jumped and scratched me in my face. Now, Josiah, can we get a closer look at this scar of yours? Yeah. Can you open the eyelid for the ouch cam? I'm going to zoom in here. And that's it there. Now, have you got any questions about your scar? If I grow older, would my scar get bigger? You're already 10 years old. So your head is about 95% as big as it's ever going to be. So if you look at our heads, our heads are actually quite similar size, right? They're roughly the same size. That means that the skin on your face isn't going to change size. And so that scar is going to stay roughly the same size. What did it look like when you first got it? It looked like this. Oh, wow. Scars just take a long time to heal, so that'll keep healing over time. And in a few years, I bet you won't even be able to notice it. Josiah, thanks very much for bringing in your amazing scar. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Lan. Zahn's in the hospital canteen, but there's no time for snacking. Oh. Huh? 
It's Bleeper O'Clock. It's from Ruth, who's had an ankle operation. Hello, Ruth. Hello. Have you got a question for me? Yeah. Why do I got a squishy nose? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of, why do I got a squishy nose-itis? <laughs> Let's see if you knows the answer. Now, Ruth, how squishy is your nose? That might be the squishiest <laughs> nose I've ever seen. Everyone's nose is a bit squishy, isn't it? Because your nose is mostly made of cartilage, and cartilage is rubbery, but most people's cartilage is quite tough, whereas yours is really, really flexible, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a squishy nose for the same reason that you've got a problem with your ankle, haven't you? What's the main thing you've got? Larson syndrome. Larson syndrome means that some of her tissues, her connective tissues and her bones don't quite grow the same as other people's. Have you got some other problems with bones as well? Yeah. Wow. So what Ruth's doing there is dislocating her knee. Her knee's actually popping out of joint. Because you've got very stretchy ligaments around your knee and the muscles are a bit looser, you can just pop your knee out of joint and then pop it back in again. And does that hurt at all? No. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think you deserve an Operation Ouch sticker. Bye. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out on the street. Does anyone have any medical mysteries for me? Oh, hello. What's your question? Why do I lose two teeth? So, first of all, show me the teeth you lost. Oh, wow, those two bottom ones. Yeah. Do you know what those two teeth are called? Um... They're called incisors. You lost your bottom two incisors. And the reason you lost them is because when you're born, you have your grown-up teeth up here in your maxilla, which is a bone of the skull, and you have your grown-up teeth down here in your mandible, which is your jawbone, and as the grown-up teeth start to come through, they push out the baby teeth. So there's nothing to worry about. Losing baby teeth is completely normal. And because you are such a great question, I'm going to give you an Operation Out sticker. There you Thank go. You. Now, did you know skin is your body's largest organ? It has a surface area of roughly two square metres. That's about the size of a bed sheet. <laughs> Next patient, please. Hello, doctor's arm. First into the clinic is Rosie, who's asking about her arms. So, Rosie, why have you come to the Archmobile? I've got some bumpy chicken skin on my arms and I want to know why. Sounds like a case of I've got some bumpy chicken skin on my arms, itis. <laughs> Would you mind opening the eyelid for the ouch cam? That's good. Oh, yeah. Look, Rosie's arm is red and bumpy. I've had this since I was born and I don't know really much about it. Do you know the actual name for this condition? Pelotosis pilaris. That's right. Now, keratosis refers to the idea of keratin, which is a protein which covers your skin. And keratin is a very tough protein, so it's what fingernails are made of, it's what rhino's horns are made of. And you can see those bits of dry skin there, all that flaky stuff, that's keratin. Now, the keratin can block pores and follicles, these little openings in your skin, and that causes bumps. It's important to say this isn't a disease or an illness. It's just a common, normal part of being a human being. Most people at some point in their life get some of it. So, Rosie, thank you very much for bringing your amazing arms to the Ouchmobile. Thank you for having me. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouch and about in the park. Any questions? Medical questions? What are boogers made out of? So, do you know why your body makes boogers? It's to trap dust and insects and germs as you breathe them in, so they don't get into your lungs. So, it's just a sticky mess made of protein, and everything that you inhale sticks to it. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's nine-year-old Jamie with a tale about his tum. I have got an interesting scar on my tummy. Sounds like a case of I've got an interesting scar on my tummy-itis. <laughs> yeah. Now, can we have a look? Uh, yeah. So what I want you to do is lift up the eye for the ouch cam. Jamie had an operation to take out a hernia a few years ago. Do you have any questions? Yeah. What is a hernia? What a hernia really is, is a little bit of the stuff that's in your tummy, all, all inside here, your guts, poking through a hole in your wall. So it's sitting under his skin, not hanging out, but still creating a lump because it's in a space where it shouldn't be. Now, that didn't cause you any problems, so you think, why do we need to do the hernia operation? The reason they do the operation is because occasionally it can get twisted. And if you twist your guts, guess what? The food can't get through, your guts get blocked up, 
gets very painful, so they did the hernia operation to prevent you needing an emergency operation. Jamie, thank you very much for bringing in your cool scar and your interesting hernia story. Thank you, Dr. Zahn. <laughs> At the hospital, Zahn's busily playing tennis. I'm about to beat Dr Chris's record. 97, 98, 99... Oh, no, a bleep! Ah. You'll never beat my record. Get to your first call. It's from Mohammed, who was rushed to hospital after he fell onto some railings. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Good. Now, have you got a question for me? How does my windpipe work? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I'm Mohammed and I want to know how my windpipe works itis. Mm. That's a mouthful. The medical name for your windpipe is your trachea, and it runs from the back of your throat down and splits in half and goes into each of your two lungs. Now, the windpipe has one very important job. It has to not collapse. So your windpipe is made up of a tough stuff called collagen with cartilage rings, and the cartilage rings keep it open and stop it collapsing. So even if you squeeze your throat a little bit, you can't collapse your windpipes. You've always got air going into your body. But you did more than push on it, didn't you, Mohammed? I mean, you actually jabbed a hole in it with a fence. It hit my throat, under my throat, then I had a small hole. Now, what kind of ambulance did you get? I did get an ambulance. I got a helicopter. You got a helicopter? Yeah. Do you know what they did in hospital then? Stitched me. And so now the hole's mended. You've got a bit of a plaster on there. Yeah. And how are you feeling? A little bit good. Well, you have done a brilliant job and you have earned an Operation Ouch sticker. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out and about on the street. Dr Chris, I've got a question for you. Why does brain work and how, why do we have thoughts? How does the brain work and why do we have thoughts? That might be the hardest question it's possible to ask anyone. What your brain does is it's a way of taking in information from all your senses, so from your eyes and your ears and your skin and your mouth, and then your brain decides what to do with that information and controls your body. But why do we have thoughts? No one knows the answer to. So to answer that question, you are going to have to become a cognitive neuroscientist. Do you think you could do that? Yes, I'll try. You'll try. Good for you. Here you go. Back with Zand, another call's come in. It's from Kate Lou and Ella, who are visiting their sister in hospital. Hi, Kate Lou. Hi, Ella. How are you doing? Good. Have you got questions for me? How come I've got a bigger mouth than my sister? What's your question? How come I've got x and my sister hasn't? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I want to know why I've got a bigger mouth than my sister and my sister wants to know why she's got x and I don't like this. Now that's a record. Let's start with your big mouth. Show me how big your mouth is. Wow, that is a big mouth. So everyone has different sized mouths, and most of that is about your genes. Everyone gets a slightly different combination of your genes, but even Dr Chris and I, who have the same genes, we should be the same in everything. Actually, one of us would have a slightly bigger mouth. I just don't know which. OK, eczema. Why have you got eczema and your sister doesn't? Well, some bits of eczema are genetic, but you don't have all the same genes as your sister. You've got a few different ones. But also, everyone grows up in a slightly different way. So all the other things in the environment that cause eczema, like which germs you're exposed to and what things live on your body, they'll all be a little bit different from your sister as well. Have I answered your questions? Yeah. You have both earned Operation Ouch stickers. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed.